So, um, good morning from uh, from Tongyong City in South Korea. This is uh, Dylan, and my pal Roy is with me today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Roy, Roy Cruz, and I'm a photographer based in the southern area of South Korea, working all over the peninsula, and I do mainly um, uh, events, travel, uh, documentary, and some portraits as well. Check out Roy's channel. Check out his website, his Instagram, it's all below. It's all below. Check out mine as well if you wouldn't mind. Um, so we are, we are here today uh, at Sunrise in Tongyong. And we're here to discuss what we're both holding in our hands, which is this beautiful new Fujifilm X-H1. Um, we'll throw out a few highs, a few lows, and sort of give you guys, you know, what we've been feeling about it for the last week or so of using it. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to give you guys a few thoughts if you're considering buying one. So let's get straight into it, man. Let's do let's, it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Um, probably the very first thing that both of us noticed um, when we when we got this camera was just the size of it. Basically that grip, uh, the weight of it, yeah, you know. Um, I picked it up in the in the Fujifilm store and the I was ready to put it back down again. I was I was that close <laughs> to just saying, nope, that's not for me. Um, is it feels a bit like a DSLR. It doesn't really feel like an X series camera. It anymore. is very DSLR like and uh, I bought it sight unseen uh, and when I unboxed it, I just kept laughing. Just, just kept giggling to myself. <laughs> chuckling, more chuckling to myself. Just what am I doing? What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Going back the direction of my uh, my full frame kit that I had gotten rid of, and mm. I think the <laughs> the reason for uh, that a lot of people you know got into the to the Fuji system in the first place was it's so small and so compact was the, mm. the the size yep. and the, the compact size of it and. Right. Uh, this body seems to be going in the, <laughs> the, opposite, the opposite, opposite direction. direction. Yeah, but uh, you know, after after nine nine days of testing it, you know, playing with it, um, the size and weight, you think it's justified? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. You get used to it, and there are some features that we'll talk about in a minute that sure. just make it worth it. I mean, you you'll pick this thing up. Um, it's definitely strong, robust. It, it has that. Um, yeah, it has that pro level. Feel, which Definitely. this camera is, yeah. it, it, that's what it's aimed for, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. aimed squarely at the professional. Uh, the larger grip. Let's talk know. about that grip for a second. Um, yeah. It's large, it's not quite large enough. Well, or perhaps it's just missing, you know, an indent on the inside here so you can tuck your fingers into it, you know? Yeah. So it, it just doesn't feel like you get enough purchase by holding this. And I, I constantly feel like I've got a hold on to it for dear life. It could just be because it's a new camera and it's quite expensive, but yep. I, I feel like I have to constantly hold on to it for dear life, so yeah. I don't know, how are you feeling about the grip? Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's a, I, was, I was actually okay with the design of the, the X-T2. As was which, I. Yeah. yeah, which we are shooting uh, in our... <laughs> in the video, In right, the video, so we can hold on to these. Um, but, uh, I don't know, for me personally, it's not, it's not a big necessity. It does feel better when I shoot with my zooms. I do use the pro zooms, the 16 to 55 and the 50 to 140. This helps. Mm -hmm. And the size and, and weight also help balance that out. Yeah. But uh, I almost feel like um, it's a little too big now for the primes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm primarily a prime shooter, so yeah. I would maybe echo that. And I don't know if it's just that when you mount them, there's a little extra space at the bottom of the body here, a little more space on each side. They just kind of look a little out of place. Like they feel like it's kind of cutesy. It's not really. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a, a professional body. I mean, anymore, the XT2, but, mm. XT1 size was really good for the primes. It was really well balanced. Right. Right. I feel. The system felt like it was engineered with all of that in mind. You know. Yeah. Um, and speaking of the older body, uh, mm. that definitely me feels more dense. The X-T2 definitely had like a dense, you felt like you were picking up a, yeah. a, a solid object. Solid right? block mm. of metal. Yeah, yeah, I don't really know what's going on inside, but it yeah. felt like a solid it block of metal. It feels like yeah. that, but this one has a yeah. bit more of a, you know, it feels hollow maybe because of the IBIS maybe mechanism. The IBIS, There's more yeah. space inside, but definitely strong, and it's, it's supposed to have that 25% uh, extra uh, thickness of magnesium Thickness on it, right? and the nice coat of paint right. that's supposed to be more durable. But. Yeah. Uh, Overall, you know, size and weight, it is a significant increase, but, uh, you know, 
uh, it is what it is. And, it is uh, what it is, yeah. And I mean, so far it's been pretty durable. Um, all the new weather sealing, we've had that out in the rain. Um, we were shooting for a couple of days in the rain, just some, some seascapes and things. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, they were wet for a good two or three hours at a time yeah. and absolutely fine. Um, neither of them, including this one, uh, fell off a tripod in the wind. It just, nothing like no, that no, at all happened. That didn't now. happen. So I can all. say that the, the coat of paint <laughs> seems to work quite well. <laughs> I don't want to test it again, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But personally, it feels, mm. uh, feels a lot mm. better with the zooms. Yeah. For me, um, but uh, overall, it's it's okay. The yeah, size I know. Is, it seems good. Yeah, it's good. And I think the extra size um, was necessitated by what would be its flagship feature on, on our next point, I think, which is the the ibis. Yes. Um, spectacular. Spectacular. <laughs> spectacular. Um, reason that that is reason enough to buy this camera. Yeah, I mean, if it was only that as the upgrade, I think I would still purchase one it's yeah, such yeah. a for the sort of work that both of us do it's it's amazing it, so yeah, it's, it's such an improvement we are primarily still shooters mm -hmm. uh, and um, the the ibis is awesome for for low light work which we do deal with a lot mm -hmm. and uh, keeping that ISO a little cleaner a little lower and we can do um, long shutter effects too, handheld it's been yeah. amazing uh, I've been able to hold the camera still with a bit of support mm -hmm. uh, down to one second and yeah. I've gotten sharp shots with with a lot of nice movement in the frame. So. That's, that's pretty wide angle though, right? Um, that was uh, I was fairly maybe 35. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. You okay. can. I, I have a blog post okay. about my initial impressions. Yeah. Uh, check it down below and you can see the photos there and the specs of each photo and I do I'm sure that I have a one second exposure. Um, that wasn't terribly wide and it was still holding up really well. Maybe it is that I just drink more coffee or something but um, yeah I've been able to get it down to with the 35 millimeter here uh, about a 15th or an eighth of a second and go a little bit longer maybe down to a quarter if I'm sort of bracing myself on yeah. something so um, but still I mean that's that's incredible um, it's to be really able to do good. that handheld, really good. You know? and, and so. uh, I, I think IBIS is the you know marketing wise it is the the flagship feature of this camera right. as well and um, you know it lives up to that definitely right right and i think as you mentioned in the beginning the might maybe the biggest thing for us uh in the way that both of us shoot is being able to say well i don't want to use iso 3200 i think i'll use iso 400 yeah and still get sharp images and exactly. that just makes for such a, a cleaner file than you would have got exactly. otherwise Right, so I mean, one one more thing maybe that we want to talk about with the IBIS, I think, is its use for. Like, primarily, we were we're, we're still shooters, so, um, but occasionally we do get to ask to do a little video for for a client. But we also like to do a lot of you know filming while we're traveling or just some personal things like that. And this IBIS makes it really really easy to get steady footage oh, yeah. as a person who doesn't own. You know, a rig of stabilization exactly, systems, you know. Exactly. So, so um, mm. when we're, I know when I'm on assignment, um, I don't want to be dealing with, you know, setting up everything. I don't want to be carrying around gimbals and stuff because I'm primarily doing stills. So I think the X-H1 makes it easier mm. for, uh, for us to, um, to make good footage. Yeah, I think your basic movements, you know, they're, they're really, really sort of easy to do with the IBIS. Yes. Yeah. I love the yeah. It works well with panning, tilting, maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of tracking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, there are some issues right now with the with the walking shots inside. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think for me at least, my footfall jerks the camera a little too much. It does. Um, I'm not a ballet dancer with this <laughs> physique, you know. So <laughs> it, it sort of it does it's never jerk late. it around. <laughs> <laughs> it does jerk it around quite a bit, and I think the camera tries to, to overcorrect for that a little bit. Yeah, so um, when, when you go this way, it goes in the opposite direction really quickly. Mm. So maybe that could be something corrected in the you know, a new firmware. Yeah, I think in, even softening that movement so it doesn't jerk away, I think, would be enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. But overall, the IBIS is amazing for both exactly. stills and video. And video. So while we're talking about speaking video... Speaking of video, mm. uh, just all of the new video features uh, have been uh, greatly upgraded. Um, we've got the um, all the modes, 50 to 200 Mbps, uh, from Full HD to 4K. Take your pick. There's a whole bunch of settings. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got mm -hmm. 
24 frames. You've got up to oh, up to the up to 120 frames 120 second, frames, which yeah. is the 5x. 5x slow motion, yep. which is also awesome, mm -hmm. and it also helps you to make really good, really cinematic good looking shots. Cinematic, yeah. yeah we've yeah. been enjoying that, and mm. uh, you'll see that in the in the video mm. a little later. Mm. Um, but that is amazing, and the video features are also a very, very good reason to upgrade to this camera. They are, they are, and I think um, personally, my uh, most appreciated feature. I mean, the slow motion is great. Uh, the IBIS is great. Uh, the, the improved video quality is absolutely wonderful. But one thing that always bugged me about the X series cameras was that if you changed settings while you were shooting stills, those settings would be reflected when you were shooting video. So there was no sort of separation of video and and still settings. Now the video color, uh, sharpness, shadow tones, all of that has its own set of items in the menu. It's completely separate from stills. And when we were doing the, the run and gun stuff the other oh, day, yeah. we're, we're shooting you know, black and white uh, long exposure landscapes, mm -hmm. but then wanting to flip back to uh, shooting some, some video of each other doing that, which you'll see in, in this video. Um, we were able to have Eterna set up in video with a you know an extra bit of shadow boost in there. Back to classic Chrome. Back or to classic Acros. Chrome or Acros or whatever. With the with the flick of a switch. All so you have to do is turn the awesome. mode dial to video, and it sets all of your video settings. Turn it back to stills. It sets all of your stills settings. So for it makes you, it so. a lot easier to jump from your stills, uh, stills profile Absolutely. to your video. And yeah. speaking of Eterna. It's awesome. It's awesome. Nice. <laughs> it's very nice, uh, um, especially for video. At first, I found it pretty flat, but I think that was the point. I mean, that yeah, is the point. Yeah. Uh, you know, for video, that look is really, really nice, and Eterna gives you footage that um, you know you can use as is and straight out of camera. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think if you increase the contrast quite a bit, it's, yeah. it's a little bit useful in, in stills as well. Mm -hmm. But you just have to really, you basically have to crush what it's good at to, to use it in stills. I thought it was a bit too low contrast for my stills. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 me too. Yeah. Same here, same here. So. But uh, it's, it's a good looking profile for video. For video, yeah. It's and for guys like us who don't do it all the time, uh, it means that you get good, clean looking footage straight out of the camera, mm -hmm. no color grading, which is not something I enjoy spending my time with. So, so. all of those things, uh, all of those things just make it a very capable video, video machine, camera, the yeah. IBIS, the, all the bit rates and, and resolution settings, yeah. and also the um, Eterna. It's yeah. uh, really, yeah. really good. Yeah, they're they're really good, and I mean having the having the ibis like you said means that you can shoot video with any lens at any time, you know. So mm -hmm. it's it's really really good. Even yeah. vintage ones and you know old older lenses. Yeah, and right. Good stuff. Right. So um, yeah, maybe we move move on. Have you got anything else for video? Or? Uh, no. Well, there is one thing related to the video side, mm. which is the AFC. Right. Okay. The AFC yeah. and overall autofocus performance uh, is really has really been improved. It has. Um, the AFC works spectacularly in video now. It's got a, a slow enough transition that you don't really notice it happening. Oh, you can change um, that too. And you can change it, yeah. 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 So um, it's been great to be able to have your shot continue to stay in focus as you move the camera. Um, yeah, that's, that's been really good. I think yeah, we use that a lot in this video. In the mm. footage you'll see here, uh, I was on AFC a lot of the time right. doing uh, doing some of the b-roll it's just right. it's so and you'll easy. see that it doesn't jump in and out like the old xt2 used to do um, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly yeah even with still subjects the xt2 would tend to jump in and out right so yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it for video i think uh, yeah the next thing that i really love about this camera is just the speed and performance uh increase just everything about it is faster yeah um from the autofocus Right, I mean, Fuji's, Fuji's added the dual uh, processors yes. inside this guy to, uh, to power the IBIS. Um, but also, they've managed to squeeze a whole lot more performance out of just the rest of the camera generally. Yeah, right? definitely, definitely. And you feel that as you you're navigating the menus, as you're shooting, as you're bringing it up to your eye. Mm -hmm. uh, just oh, that eye sensor just pops in instantly, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Every yeah. single thing uh, feels faster, mm -hmm. and that is a significant upgrade. So right. that the speed and performance, the video upgrades and the mm -hmm. IBIS, those are the three major things that yeah. uh, make this camera worth getting. Absolutely, yeah. And I would say that I've got the 35mm 1.4 on here, and while we're talking uh, about speed and performance, um, 
This guy is, it's a whole new lens, and I think we might have convinced Roy to go get one now. I was looking on eBay just <laughs> before this, you know, okay. looking, for, looking for a good deal, because it's, uh, it's got a new lease on life. It really has. <laughs> um, you know, when, when it first came out and you were trying to focus it on the, on the X-Pro1, um, you could spend a good couple of seconds waiting for the autofocus to kind of <laughs> do its thing. Uh, the lens itself has received a load of firmware updates, but then this body allows it to work in AFC mode. And I tested that walking down the street towards other people while they were walking towards me. And I was shooting in AFC and bang, one shot, you're perfectly in focus. Bang, one shot, perfectly in focus, wide open. Yeah. So um, they've really, really improved the performance with this lens, yeah. So it's not only fast with the with the newer newer lenses like the, right. the pro zooms with the with the special motors, but right. uh, the, all, and the and the f twos the really fast f twos, but also with the yeah. the older lenses. Right. I this mean, is the first one of the first lenses that came out. It, yeah, I think and it is the, not, actually the first. It was in that first trio, right? Yeah, the so, first trio, yeah. and it's not the, it's not known <clears throat> as the fastest lens in the lineup, but. <laughs> The X-H1 really brings it, you know, really brings it back to speed. Yeah, you know, yeah. Definitely getting one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Amazing. the good stuff, I think. You know, we, we've, we've covered everything that, um, that's been improved with the camera, I think, pretty basically there. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a great machine. If, if those things are the things you're concerned about, I would, I would get one. Let's have a chat about some things that maybe could be improved. Yeah, yeah. okay. Some yeah. stuff that we're not really fans of at this, at this moment in time. Um, <laughs> one thing is, well, this is a, uh, you got the new sub monitor, which is off the GFX pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and it looks great. It's got the e-ink screen. Looks cool. Um, but I haven't really, personally, I haven't found it that useful <laughs> for my purposes. Um, I would really rather have that, the dial. The dial. From, yeah. from the X-T2, the yeah. exposure compensation dial. I use that a lot. Yeah. Uh, in, in quick documentary work so um, I haven't really found that uh, the the sub monitor has given anything no I mean it doesn't give anything the rear screen doesn't you know I mean you turn the rear screen on you get 50 times more information than you would by having the uh, the sub monitor there yeah I mean perhaps checking your memory card count make sure you've got a memory card before you leave the house um, that is pretty cool seeing know. all seeing the shots left <laughs> yeah uh, but uh, overall, mm -hmm. it hasn't been a, a, an essential <laughs> not at addition all, no. for me. Yeah, no, not for me. I would much prefer to have that dial. Um, and right. although you do have a replacement for that, right? And I think you found a way to, right, to, right. to work that. Right, yeah. right. In order to replicate, sort of replicate the experience of having that dedicated dial, uh, I like to switch this EV button. Mm -hmm. It's set by default. It's set to hold, press and hold, and turn the dial so you can adjust the settings. But there's an option to just uh, turn it into a switch where you hit it once and then you can just ride the dial as yeah. much as you like and press it again to turn it off. And that's really good. Um, I think that's kind of brought back that, that experience for me. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. I guess that's one way to do it, yeah. I haven't yet done that, but I might, I might give that a try, I yeah. think. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um, let's, let's chat buttons. Yeah, buttons. Those have changed quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of them have moved. Most of them are rather large and chunky now. They've right. got a definite click to them now. Oh yeah. I think you can definitely notice that, yes, I have actually pushed that button. Nice and, yeah. nice and chunky, especially yeah. the AF on button. I appreciate that <coughs> as a back button focus user. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Um, do you back focus bu button? No, I don't. I actually okay. use, and we'll talk about the shutter button in a moment, I think yeah, I've yeah. got a bit of an experience with that. So. Right. Yeah. But uh, it is definitely nice and chunky. Uh, I do feel that it might be, might be, for me personally, a little too far to the left. I have to kind of reach, and it's very close mm. to the very close to the AEL button, which uh, has made me hit the AEL button by mistake mm -hmm. many, many times. So that's just one thing. Maybe could move a little, little closer to the thumb. Right. So maybe one of the buttons that doesn't have that definite click would be the Q button. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the placement of that is a little. It's the same as the GFX. It's a little strange for a So the Q camera. button feels like uh, an XT1 button to me. When it does, yeah. The, there used to be a lot of complaints about the, uh, about the, 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 they're too deep and they're the, not that tactile. Right. You the don't get feedback. It's off. kind yeah. of the same. Uh, the Q button is, yeah, like that, and it's also in a kind of a weird place for me personally. Yep. I'm not a fan of it being here because uh, on the XT2, uh, you can find it around the joystick, and that is really 
Yeah, that's, that's it's an easy thing to do. It's where your thumb is anyway. And typically, you know, when I'm using it, I'll be, I'll be holding the camera to my face and I'll continue talking to my clients, but I'll be inside the screen there with the cue menu, just changing a few settings or something like that. Yeah. And I feel like I have to kind of lose my concentration to, to push it now, which right, is, right. maybe it's just a, a getting used to it thing. Maybe I'll just yeah. have to learn, learn how it is but in the it new does, camera. But it does yeah. feel like it uh, takes more effort to, to hit the cue button on right, this camera. Right. So what do you think about the touch screen? The touch screen? Um, so I played with it to see what it would do when I took it out of the box. Yeah. And then I went shooting and I turned it off <laughs> because I just kept smashing it with my nose or... Yeah. You know, I didn't really find that the moving the focus points, you could put your thumb or whatever on the screen and move the focus points mm -hmm. while you're shooting. I didn't feel like that reacted quick enough to be useful. Yeah. I have it um, off. I have it off as well. I yeah. have it off and um, I guess it would be useful for autofocus in video, yep. but it's not something that I would use on no. a regular basis. And also a lot of the, if you switch the video into uh, video silent mode, it actually puts a lot of the controls on the screen for you so you don't have to push any of the buttons. Yeah. So that's that's quite useful, I think, if you want to be changing settings that's cool. uh, while, you're, yeah. while you're filming. Right, so, right. Um, but overall, not, mm, not really... Not really using the touch. No, screen. I use it for playback to pinch zoom and things like that, but it's it's turned off in the in it's the turned mode, off in so. the, it's yeah. turned off in mine yeah. as well. So yeah, uh, let's let's go back to to one other button that <laughs> that is a little easier to push. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that shutter. What do you think about it? It's a it's trigger happy sort of shutter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's very soft and just. The slightest movement will mm. will set it off, and uh, you'll find yourself shooting as you're adjusting. Like for me personally, mm. um, when you uh, you know when you first pick up the camera, you'll be shooting, just firing off shots, because um, <laughs> it's it's way different from the XT2 shutter button. It really is. There's no you know the XT2. You really have to push that guy in. Right? Um, this one I found I'm not a back button focuser, and so I, it's a very small push to focus and then just twitch to shoot, which I think is great for stability. You no longer have to sort of wrench the camera to, to shoot, but it takes a little getting used to. I found myself, um, like you said, trigger happy. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. link to Weird Al's song up there, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself quite trigger happy, you know? Yeah, um, yeah I think that's, that's my take. You on get the used button. to it. Uh, we were shooting video and I found that I wanted to start the video recording, but. Apparently, I had already started it, so when I pressed it, uh, it stopped the video, so it was kind of right. hard to get used to, right. especially in the cold. Yeah, when very your easy are to cold, push in the cold. Yeah. When your fingers are cold and you don't feel that much, um, it's really easy to set off this shutter button, so just something to keep in mind. Right. I the guess. other thing that I found is I, I hang my cameras off Black Rapids, mm -hmm. and with the X-T2, I can leave it turned on. With yeah. the X-H1, I'm firing off a bunch of hip shots if I leave it turned on, oh, yeah, so yeah. it sort of hits the body Definitely. and just fires off a few frames. You yeah, know? yeah. So, so. It's, it's not really a disadvantage, but uh, it's uh, something to look out for. Mm, mm. Something definitely, uh, it's different on the X-H1. Yeah. Are there any... I mean, all the buttons on this are assignable, right? So yes. you can you can basically do things with them, and I think one of the things that I noticed, and I'm pretty sure you probably noticed this too, oh, yeah. is... The flagship feature, the IBIS, can't be assigned to a button. Switching it on and off can't yeah, be assigned yeah. to we, a button. We learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there were, there were a few expletives thrown about while we were playing with this camera. Yeah, what was happening was we would uh, we'd be moving from video, shooting video of each other, uh, back to the tripod for landscapes, and we'd forget to turn off the IBIS. And if IBIS is on while you're on a tripod, there's a tendency for it to correct for motion that for movement there. that's not there. Yeah. So we had some blurry shots. So it would be really nice if we could uh, set the IBIS to one of the buttons. Yeah, and that's just a firmware thing. So um, mm -hmm. uh, version 1.01 .01, Fuji, please. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that, I mean, that was, that was the only complaint that I would have about the buttons and everything like that. Yeah, um, yeah let's move on. Um, Anything you've been experiencing with the AF? You mentioned something about. Uh, oh yeah, I mean it's accuracy. it's been it's been extremely fast, and I talked about how accurate the 35 1.4 was in AF-S mode, single shot mode, single focus mode. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that the primes. I use a lot of primes, so I've been using the the, the 35 f2, the yeah. 30, uh, sorry, the 23 f2, the 35 1.4, mm -hmm. the 56 1.2, and I've noticed that they just tend to miss sometimes. 
So the lens will go through its motions, the camera will report back little green square, yes, I'm in focus, mm -hmm. and the entire frame will be blurry as though the lens is at minimum focus. It just won't hit anything, and this is in good light. I noticed it maybe maybe ten times over the last week that's right, happened to right. me. So I, I haven't experienced that. I've been shooting primarily with the sixteen to fifty-five yeah. uh, on this camera mm. uh, or the uh, manual lens. So I haven't really noticed mm. that. But uh, yeah. it is something to maybe take note of. Yeah, and I hope that you know if other people are experiencing that, that we can get a, um, a firmware upgrade for the lenses or the body or whatever it takes to to fix that. Yeah, yeah right. right. Um, otherwise, I mean. Yeah, there haven't been any issues with AF accuracy. It's it's fast. I mean, AF is fast. Focuses down to minus one EV using the PDAF now, so that's that's, that's a fantastic. big one too. Yeah. The sensitivity has been increased, and that just makes everything work so well. Yeah, in low light, it works a lot better. But also overall, I find that it's a lot snappier. You know. Yeah. So, mm. so what right. do you think about uh, what do you think about battery life? Yeah, so Fuji really wants us to use those S-type batteries. Yeah. 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 They. Um, I think for good reason. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, there was a significant difference in our tests. Uh, in my first test, I used a uh, an old third party non S battery, mm. and I got like mm. 350 shots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How would and you did fairly better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, using the using the Ibis um, turned on to continuous, so it would be constantly, no matter what I was doing, have the Ibis working. Um, I managed to get about 650 frames yeah. out of a battery, which I think is that's pretty good. It's pretty close to the XT2, if it was, and this is Ibis, this is pretty. You know? <laughs> this is just mm. shooting, isn't it? This is just shooting, yeah. Mostly shooting, and yeah. not no previews, no wa no wireless transfers, and other things like that. Yeah, so, so I mean, I don't really spend my time. Yeah, I don't really yeah. chimp or anything like that. We have yeah. the EVF for that, so exactly. you can kind of chimp before you shoot. So uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, with my mm. with the XT2, I was getting something similar with my old batteries. Uh, I was yeah. getting around 600 or so yep. uh, with the older third-party batteries, but it's. it's Decreased significantly, but the the battery life is good overall. It was be it's better than better than I expected. Better than I was expecting mm, with mm. all the new features yeah. and the touchscreen and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's good. But when, there is yeah. <laughs> One of us is going to talk about this. When, uh, it when needs to be put, said. It needs to be said. Um, the camera tells us all the time. Uh, when you put the older batteries in anything that's not an S-type battery, the camera just pops up with a message on the back screen or in the viewfinder for about two seconds or so. Yeah. Every time you turn it on, warning you that you should use an S-Type battery. Yes. This one will drain quickly. Every single time. Every and single time. That is pretty distracting because <laughs> mm. when you want to shoot quickly and when you want to frame up your shot, you have that block of text just right. kind of blocking your view. And uh, there's already a, a yellow battery meter. Right, the battery changes color in the, in the picture, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, I think, is enough warning. Mm. Like, maybe give us a way to turn off the non-S battery warning. Yeah, I mean, we know. You know, we know. <laughs> so. so hopefully in a future yeah. firmware update, we have a way to turn that off. Or the frequency of it maybe lessen to, you know, once per battery? Once per battery, mm -hmm. if that's possible. Yeah. And uh, Oh yeah, one more thing. Speaking of the battery meter, uh, another thing about the non-S batteries uh, is the accuracy of the meter right. is greatly uh, decreased because... Right. Um, we both found this actually, that uh, we'd be shooting and it says that you sort of have half a battery left um, on the little battery meter and it might say 30 or 40 percent on the percentage meter, but then the battery will just give up, just psh, drop. Yeah, and then. Drop. It just turns itself off. The, the weird right. thing, uh, yeah, <laughs> with my experience, yeah. um, it keeps trying to turn back on. So mm. on other cameras, it would just turn off and not give you the option to turn it back on. But at this point in time, when you once the battery goes red, it turns it off. If you switch it on again, it'll try to keep you know it'll try to keep coming back to life. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of mm -hmm. weird. Um, I'm gonna have to give that a go. I want to see that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to. Trying to wake up again, so right. uh, that's that's another thing with non-S batteries that you should maybe look out for. But uh, yeah, that message. <laughs> yeah. So those of you who like us are heavily invested in Fuji batteries. Um, you know, I shoot with two bodies most of the time, and so I've got a, a fair amount of batteries to to make I sure. I have I've got more non-S batteries than uh, right than S right. ones. Having used, you know, XT1, XT10, you know, XT2, XT20, yeah. you've got enough of those batteries lying around that you're going to yeah. see that message. You're going to see that message a lot. <laughs> so <it's laughs> please give us a way to disable that. Right. Right. Yeah.
Um, but overall, uh, this is a spectacular camera. I yeah, think. I mean, if you don't mind the size and weight, and you're happy for features like the IBIS, the extra speed increase, or you need this thing for video, mm -hmm. it's a no-brainer. I, oh, yeah. I would pick one of these up, maybe two. Um, this is uh, definitely the highest performance body that Fuji has put out. Yep. And I think that's what the H is for, yep. isn't it? Yeah, H, yeah, high something, high performance. High performance. Yeah, high performance. So HP1. That's... Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Uh, it's a good camera, highly recommend it. Uh, if you know, you're looking for that speed, looking for the IBIS yeah, and yeah. the video. It's a great camera. A um, few little things, but I think some of those can be fixed in firmware and hopefully X-H2 might have an exposure dial back. But, yeah. yeah. And uh, another thing we've been playing with... Yeah, so we've spent some time days. with Laowa's new um, native Fujifilm you ready? offering. Zero. Nine millimeter, f2.8, zero D. <laughs> it's been fantastic. Uh, that's a great little lens, and we'll talk about that uh, in an upcoming review, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's a super wide, super sharp, no distortion, huge vignette kind of lens. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's super wide. I, I super love wide, it. Yeah. I love shooting wide, and yeah. it's, a, it's a great little lens. And it takes filters. And it, it takes filters. filters. 49 millimeter ones, and it's super wide, so you're going to need thin ones, but it takes filters. Sweet. So I think that's pretty much it, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's tell them where we can, they can find us. Yeah, so I mean, you can find me at uh, tattoosofasia.com, dylangolby.com, uh, Dylan Golby Photographer on Instagram, uh, also on Facebook, um, and Roy. Yeah, RoyCruz.com, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and all my social media and my YouTube channel uh, can be linked from there. So yeah. uh, check it out. Yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. We'll leave you with some, some footage and stills that we've been shooting with these cameras. Um, thanks for watching. Peace out.